Check, 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 check. Check, check. All right. I'm, I'm back, baby. <laughs> yes. Grow a week off. Huh? Uh, what did you do you do in your time off? Uh, nothing. Oh, okay. It's not as exciting <laughs> no, I, as it sounded. I, I, um, I tried to keep on top of news stories. And, oh, that's, and that's good. I found myself just... Uh, feeling like i'm just we're flooded with just way too many topics to drowning swirling drowning or they're just stu- like uh stuff's coming out so rapidly and i feel the need to talk about a lot of it yeah it's almost like a compulsion which can both be both good and bad right yeah <laughs> it's bad it's all it bad go, it can go both ways yeah yeah no I, it's not really quite where we want to go but some of these things i think merit discussion some of them merit discussion. So, um, I for uh, for this show, I think uh, I want to do something called lightning round. And I was going to do a gag with a timer where we actually set the timer. Oh, I bought my phone for that. Had it ring? You did? Yeah. So we could like sit, like how long do you want to do? Like ten minutes? We go bing. Okay, ten minutes each segment. We have four sections. Yeah, four sections. Okay. And then, um, do we want to talk about our uh, lantern walk or like like we've got our our things? Lantern walk? Yeah, yeah, we've got our things we do now. Because we, cause we're like following a structure and we're doing a thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've completely forgotten whatever it is that we're doing what here. What are we doing here? I don't even know. <laughs> yes. <coughs> so, um, no, I was not thinking about that because last Saturday... We were planning on a walk, and we had everyone loaded into the car. We drove to the park where we were planning a walk, all got out of the car, and one of our little darlings had Crocs and no socks and no coat at all, just a T-shirt. A T-shirt and shorts. And shorts. It was 32 degrees. It was 32 degrees. We're like, ah, this is 34. 34. We're like, all right, here we are for a bracing walk in the crisp fall air with our coats and, you know... And, you know, it is true that if we got moving after about a half hour of moving, I'd probably be carrying my coat, honestly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I had like a couple of layers on. I expected to take one off. Yeah. But still. And, and also true that we had carefully informed the kids over and over and over again and like what to wear. And like, apparently they were like casting their coats off on the way to the car. Yeah, so we like, they had the their coats in their off. hands. They'd leave the house, and then when we'd get in the car would Coat's we'd gone. find that the coat was gone it's not in the car we pulled that part we called we pulled the car apart looking for that coat yes oh my God. so uh, so we just let it, that was like the window that was our time window that for the weekend for the walk so we just had to turn around and come home and like glare at each other mm. yeah. anyway but we did get a bonus walk in we did <clears throat> so why don't you dis- describe that? So our walk last week actually ended up being um, a lantern walk for Martinmas, where we went to our friends, the Martins Farm, um, and celebrated the Feast of St. Martin de Tours, who was a military man and conscientious objector. And so we got there after dark, we lit our lanterns, we had a brief talk about him, and then we lit our lanterns. It was kind of appropriate to the topic because it featured this guy in the like Roman legion who gave a poor beggar his, his coat. coat. Yes. <laughs> or uh, like he tore it in half. Tore it or in something. half. Like he had a big cloak, a cloak. Which is basically a blanket yeah. with a fastener, right? Yeah. So he tore it in half, so each of them had a half a blanket to go on with the day. Yeah. And he had a vision of Jesus that night. None of us were in a position to tear our coats in half. To Actually, no one of the people there ended up giving uh, each of them a blanket okay. to wrap around themselves to walk. That's and, true. Yeah, it was, That's it was true. Good. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure they will quite get the story that tr- get the story the same way we did, but right, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Um, so we lit our lanterns and we took a walk around the farm. It wasn't nearly as long as we had hoped to take the children on a walk, but we took a walk. We had a big bonfire. Bonfire. Yeah. We drank cider and ate tea cakes and wine. It was lovely. It was lovely. It was nice to be in Saturday. the dark around a bonfire. It was very primal. Mm. Yeah. primordial i felt it i was there, I was there yeah. for it yeah 
So th- that that was nice. That was our walk. Um, yeah, I just want to emphasize we did work on getting the kid. The kids do have coats. We're, they own coats. Know, don't send us coats. Don't need. To, we have so many coats. No need to call child protective services. And also, their siblings had been tasked. Their older siblings, like who are thirteen and eleven. Like, make sure your siblings make, don't let them throw their had, coats away. Had been tasked Grab with making coats. sure that the younger kids who wind up in car seats in the very back, the third row. So it's hard for us to see them and check on them, and because we can't really climb back there ourselves. Well, that was the thing; it kept happening. Yeah. Like every time we turned up somewhere, someone was like, "Had coatless, coatless." Like, yeah. What? And the older siblings are like, "Oh, oh. sorry, I was, I was." Staring into space, I didn't notice. I mean, right after we said, double check, make sure everyone has a coat. Uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, just it's it was it's a good thing we're not bitter. Well, it's 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 we want to be angry at the kids, but we're also kind of mad at ourselves that we didn't like check again for the seventh time. You know that everyone had a coat. Had a coat again. It just didn't seem necessary but that's like that's what parenting is it's like every damn thing that doesn't ever seem like it ought to be necessary it totally is is like check again you know oh no, no check again here we are cleaning up vomit because <laughs> of whatever because <laughs> of whatever that i didn't check yeah bust my bark yeah yeah um so we do the walk a week and was there another set oh what what we're reading i'm not reading anything new I'm going I'm to, slow. I, I'm actually, um, I have various things to talk about that I was reading, but I'm going to try and just do a brief mention of them. Um, one of them I wrote up on my blog. Uh, it is a book of short stories by Alastair Reynolds called Deep Navigation. And mm-hmm. it's some of his lesser known stories, including some of his earliest published work, He's a science fiction slash dark space opera Mm -hmm. writer. And uh, I initially had started to review the book on my Books That Wrote Me blog and read the first few stories and like, yeah, these are terrible. They shouldn't have been published. Like these were, they show a lot of promise, but they're like workshop stories that didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Like, the they were really good at setting a scene or evoking a mood, but then there was no... (laughs) plot to speak of but um so i was not very pleased about it but i kept reading the stories and then they got much better and there were several that were really quite good oh i think you told me about the last i heard about this was when it was like oh these kind of suck these kind of suck yeah but the rest of the the later stories are mostly quite good and mostly rank up with his his other work Mm -hmm. so anyway so i was pleased that i stuck it out um we also have been reading uh Norse myths to the kids, mm, mm-hmm. and uh, we've been um, we've been reading uh, the Sword in the Stone, the Sword in the Stone, yeah, by T. H. White. We're almost done with that. Full of anachronisms, very. Fun. <clears throat> it's a very. The thing is, it's not really a kids' book. Not not really. But yet, I read it. It's when, not dirty or anything. It, no, but it was a very substantial book to me when I was eleven or 11, twelve. Twelve. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's fifth or sixth grade, I guess. Yeah. And um, it's amazing how much of it I remember, even though I don't think I've read it since then. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the thing. Kind of something about me is like stuff that happens in books is more real to me than your life than my life, and it yeah. always has been. I don't know why that is, but... Um, life of the mind. Life of the mind. I'll give you the life of the mind. Ha! Carry on. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I also have read the first... I finished the first half of Barney Sanders' uh, Our Revolution. Yeah. And I won't do a whole review of that now, but um, it's, but it's good. It's good coming along. Yeah, it really is. And it's... um. The first half, basically, you get through the entire campaign. It moves Mm -hmm. along. We're on 200-some pages, and we're done with the campaign. Mm -hmm. The second half is his policy prescriptions. Oh, the things that we should For several hundred pages. And it actually has, I didn't count them, but... Yeah, I might like that part of the book. Dozens and dozens of charts and graphs, you know. Charts and graphs. Charts and graphs. Magic markers. We're down with that. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of amazing that this... That he, that this got that he published this in this form, yeah. Like with all these stats, charts, and graphs, tables, talking points, it's basically a, a 
um, the second half of the book is basically like your uh, marching papers for progressive causes. Right or, there. Well, or if you're in reality, center right. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, for what's considered to be progressive, progressive in the United States causes, yes, yeah, progressive in the United States, yeah. I think, I think it's important just to contextualize, but carry on, right? Yeah, so, Eleanor was eating that book up, literally. L- yeah, literally, yeah. <laughs> Did you get it? I got she, it from her in time <laughs> before she chewed up any pages. Yes, she started on the spine. <clears throat> okay, all right. That's where you should always start. Always Stroke start. the spine. <laughs> Harry Potter reference. Anyway, okay, so uh, it's going well. Our first topic in uh, in the lightning round. Lightning round, okay. This is the ongoing story of sexual misconduct. Are you, are you starting a timer? Timer's going. Okay. Ten minutes. So I have, I have a joke. Oh, dear. Go ahead. I, I first should say I have to give credit to a guy whose handle is Corsio on Reddit. Why is Roy Moore good at blackjack? I don't know why. Because he thinks over 21 is a bust. You always stay with 17 to 21, and you hit on 16 and under. There you go. Excellent. Okay, is that tasteless enough? (laughs) That's pretty tasteless, but Roy was a dirtbag. I think we know that. Carry on. So um, then the revelation that kind of got me in the gut a bit this week, I have to say, I try to be as cynical as possible. Yeah. And I'm always finding that I can't, it's it's not possible to be cynical enough, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. It was Al Franken. Yeah. I'm like, Al Franken, no! Really? But he can draw the United States from memory. That's a cool party trick, I have That's to cool say. Yeah. Yeah. It's a dirt bag, though. <sighs> and so, I, I don't know, I mean... I'm left with this, like people are saying, like uh, Slate was saying, Al Franken should resign immediately, and I'm uh, finding myself unhappily having to agree with that. You know? Oh, so you're not like one of the I stand with Al Franken, and here's why, people. <laughs> I'm not going to stand with Roy Moore. I'm not going to stand with Al Franken, but it does. Um, it's a conservative smear campaign, Paul. I want to talk a little bit about how. We're supposed to think about these things. Think about the veracity of this witness. No, not that. Oh, sorry. I mean, I, we can talk about that. But, yeah, no, we can't, but go on. Uh, <laughs> but uh, how it is that you contextualize these things when basically they are all lumped under this umbrella that you might call sexual misconduct. That's a term yeah. I'm hearing in the in like the uh, BBC media, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and but it right it uh, it. it covers a lot of ground and i find that a little frustrating a huge swath a huge swath of behaviors ranging from you know forcible rape and molestation and pedophilia honestly on the one end it's called a bibophilia uh to um to like you know harassing this this woman taking pictures of her while she was sleeping pretending to grab her breasts and whatnot and and also just getting inappropriate during this skit, right? Well, making rude jokes and whatnot. Well, here's the thing. So it covers this huge swath of ground. I'm like, well, which actually, of which of these things are impeachable offenses? Actually, I want to be very clear though about yeah. Al Franken's actions. Okay, that was assault. It's closer to the first end of the spectrum that you described. With the force, forcing, force kissing. kissing. I want yeah, you to think about yeah. the context. Yeah, he was. Um, a colleague, right. but not precisely a peer. Imagine if no, he wasn't. Veronica at thirteen, right, was in a theater program with yeah. the teenage other teenagers, well, and someone seventeen or eighteen. And this is an important part. He wrote this skit with this kiss for them. Yeah, yeah. Came up with an idea to put Veronica in a position where he she had to kiss him. Right. And she said, no, I don't want to do that. No, no I don't want to do that. And then he forced her to kiss him. It's also the fact that she had been in Playboy somehow gives a lot of people a license to... to Why is that even to a impugn, topic of conversation? ...to impugn her character. Yeah, that's just horse shit. But, well, it is and it isn't. But, I mean, that's why she was there. Because she was in Playboy? Yeah, she was on this, like, USO tour or whatnot because she was, a, a you know, a model. Okay, so she's a sex worker. I guess you could call you could say uh, you could call it that. And she agreed to do certain things. Yeah. And he. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm not saying that it was right. I'm saying this is in the. This is being used as like a. Um, to discredit. 
the to, victim. To discredit her and basically say, well, she was this, so it was okay to molest her more because she's already degraded. Because she's a sex worker. You know, and, it's okay to molest sex workers yeah, is the idea. Yeah, and I, I don't, but, I'm saying I don't buy that. Yeah, no, that's, that's crap. I mean, and frankly, to bring it up <clears throat> is to deflect from his actions. And the actual thing that happened... Yeah, is he is, assaulted her. Is he assaulted her. And it maybe wasn't what you usually consider a, as a sexual assault. And then went on assault. to continue joking about it. Right, right. No, it's it's it was bad behavior. It was very bad it behavior. It was assault. And, but um, she did ask him for an apology. She didn't ask for damages, which actually enhances her credibility as far as I'm concerned yeah. to some extent. And um, said that she has accepted his apology. Accepted his apology. And, that's uh, and that she does not want him to resign from the Senate. So is it, I, I don't, this is like, is it then our job to say, no, 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 this is beyond the pale. He has to be removed immediately. He has to go in the penalty box for 10 years or whatever. Yes, it is. That's our job. Huh? That's our okay. job. In other words, what the hell are we saying to our daughters about men that assault them? They can apologize and we should all go move on. Or we tolerate their behavior in public service. We, we yeah. tolerate. We tolerate that. Yeah. So, and every day I keep hearing that the numbers accusing more are, are going up. Coming. Of course they are. And he's been around a long time. Being he's a been around a long time. Being and a like you know, I mean, somebody needs to to uh, produce. Uh, the poster that was up on the wall of the elementary school saying, "Have you seen this man? Report him immediately." <laughs> yes. Apparently they stopped short of doing that at the local mall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They just said, no, don't come back here. Stop harassing the kids. Yeah, this is not cool. Not actually cool. No. It's kind of gross. And it wasn't just chatting them up. It was assaulting mm-hmm. them. Right. And so his wife's I actually don't have, him. I don't, I don't have any, like, uh, just to be clear, I don't have any um, evidence about the mall story. But no. it's it's, um, it's believable in the context of other things. The the actual body of evidence brought forth by the stories of what are we at twelve or something? 10 uh, yeah, or 12 I've, I've, women. I lost count after six. It's uh, it's pretty. Uh, it, it's long past the point where it's hard to where where it's hard to believe. You know, right, right. right? It's it's long past the point of overwhelming uh, credibility. Except for the tribalists. Except right. for the tribalists. The tribalists are like, well, if another couple of dozen come forward, maybe we'll think about it. You know, and then, but then the tribalists. But his wife says he's a, a fine person and a good Christian. And so. I mean, really, why wouldn't you take her word for it? Yeah. Now, was she a bad person for doing that? Well, you tell me. I, I'm trying to spend this, to, to spend as much time in this sort of um, flood of revelations doing more listening and less mansplaining and judging, you know? Yes, she's wrong to do that. You think? Oh, come on. <laughs> no, see, Paul, if, if, you had, if you cheated on me, I would take you back, right? Yeah. If I found out you were raping women or molesting girls, yeah. you would have to leave the house. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. She, it, she, because people like but, to bring that up. But she, well. she believes, I presume, that she's doing the virtuous, long-suffering housewife thing. And that was a certain uh, Democratic presidential candidate's job as well, was like uh, smoothing over... Smoothing over the ruffles here. Yeah. Um, for, you know... And there, there standing was Standing by my man and everything. Wasn't there a member of Because that's the feminist thing to do. ...whose job was containing bimbo eruptions? I believe so. Yeah. Something to that effect. So... No. So, I don't want to... But, okay, so... It's not that I think that she's right, but I'm I'm just wondering where do we really place our outrage? You know, well we place it on him, but do sure. we also impugn and his her? enablers? Yeah, his enablers have yeah. fault to bear as well. I unfriended Seriously. someone on Facebook. Ooh, the unfriendings. Uh, and it's only the second or third time I've ever done that, as I as, far I've as only I can un- recall. I've unfriended bots. Lots and of it, people have unfriended me, though. <laughs> and it was a uh, it was a a guy. I don't remember how I wound up friend friending him in the first place, right. but uh, he was just he was insisting that he supports Roy Moore. I'm like, yeah. So I asked him. I said, um, "So can I have your Keurig machine?" <laughs> Do what you responded. What? What he said? Huh. 
it's just H U H period or something. And then uh, one minute. Do we have one minute left? Yep. Well, they're like, well, okay, this guy's humorless, a humorless ass. And yeah. so just like, and, and, um, you ended it there. I just ended it. I, I, I had more jokes to make. <laughs> and you fortunately declined to make them in public. Uh, yeah. That was probably for the best. Yes. No, there's, this is a reckoning that's long since overdue. I heard mm-hmm. a great analogy that it's, it's a bit similar to all the revelations coming to the fore about police brutality because of cell phones, right? Oh, cell phone right, cameras. So, so there's cell phone cameras, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's this reality that's possible because of the the age we live in and the way technology can support these kinds of revelations happening. But um, this reckoning is long since due. And it's the thing feminists have said for decades. You have to believe the victims. Except for Gloria Steinem. Oh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Or any of the current... Feminists coming forward to defend Al Franken, to defend which Al is Franken. absolutely repugnant. It's just and trash. much like the white moderate, yeah, yeah. the feminists that defend perpetrators right. are the worst of the bunch. Yeah, I have nothing kind to say about that. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, I, the thing is, I'm. It's like I said. It's very. I'm finding it very frustrating because. Um, it's it's really hammering home this this basic thing that you know if if you admire someone for being good at something at music at you know politics mm-hmm. at comedy at whatever don't delude yourself into thinking that this is a good person in any other way any whatsoever other way. yeah because you will only be sorely disappointed yeah that goes for sports heroes it goes oh, for, all these people yeah we're at time by the way yeah I I know but. Uh, it's it's just it's just part of this. I don't know what is twenty seventeen going to be the year of the great disillusioning. Eh. Uh, for some people, I guess. Yeah. All right. So we have another topic. Yeah. This one's probably going to be pretty short because I don't have a whole lot to say about it, and I don't know that you do either. Is but it, uh, uh, but it's here. This yeah. it's here. This is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Oh, I'll give us five minutes for that. I, I don't know that we have much. Do we? Yeah. Do we, I, I, don't, I, I don't think I have anything. But carry on. I just have the following notes. It says uh, Mick Mulvaney will likely be appointed to the CFPB uh, interim director position. Hmm. Uh, Richard Cordray is stepping down. Mulvaney has previously said that he doesn't like the fact that the CFPB exists. Oh. And he actually co sponsored a bill to eradicate it? To eradicate it, to eliminate oh. the bureau. Yeah. Which means that Trump is appointing him <laughs> to direct it. To direct it. That makes sense. <coughs> I can see that, yeah. So I, I've i said for a long time now that I think these folks are anarchists. And I don't say that... In a loving way? In a loving way. like No. But I think I know what I'm looking at. This is... Um, this is exactly analogous to... I understand that. I'm, I'm pro-anarchy, but... Yeah. Yeah. But this is analogous to putting Perry in charge of energy <laughs> and Pruitt in charge of EPA. Is and to be clear, we had similar, we had very similar appointments for the last two administrations, and we didn't talk about it quite the same way. Like, uh, oh, like the guy, the 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 uh, Monsanto guy that was put in charge of. Oh yeah, you know, just, right. I mean, just these absurdities, these yeah. absolute absurdities. No, Obama did that. Yeah. Yeah. Good well, he he. Um, his entire uh, cabinet was basically chosen by the Saudi prince, yeah, um, and were all all ranking people in Goldman and whatnot, right? So, yeah, yeah. so this so no, this is this is nothing new. This actually is not new. What, the, this is like some new horror. The aspect of it that does seem new is that these folks are openly and blatantly talking about eliminating or destroying, or you know, the the institution that they're put in charge of rather than just corrupting it <laughs> or yeah. making it more yeah. or making it more, you know, I mean, honestly, this goes back to the council for American competitiveness, the quails mm-hmm. project where, you know, let's look at regulations that impede this uh, business and remove them uh, that Im- Im- impede profitability and just, uh, and come up with a streamlined process for removing those. That's yeah. so that's really not that new. So I, but this, like, let's yeah. destroy the entire institution, and then, hey, you get to run it. Yeah. And that includes Carson, 
and DeVos. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's that's it's a little weird. It's honestly it's, it's pretty weird. far. Um, but yeah, I mean, also I want to say that the the sorry state of the CFPB, you can largely lay that at Obama's feet. Oh yeah, when he didn't. Couldn't couldn't muster the balls to actually try and push Warren's appointment through, or just to give the bureau teeth. To yeah, really function to give it any any teeth to to give it any to promote it basically. Right, because it was never his thing. No, no, it wasn't actually his thing. He wasn't into that. It wasn't actually part of his agenda, no. and so he wasn't want he didn't wasn't willing to ruffle any feathers at all to make it, it happen. Right. And that's pathetic and so you know caitlin johnstone keeps saying progressives have to come to grips with how bad the obama administration was if they're ever going to make any progress progress or make it do any do any better do any better you can't do better unless unless you accept acknowledge what's happened what's happened yes because like getting back to that yeah isn't going to be going anywhere no no (laughs) my goodness except to your sort of like um willed ignorance or whatever you want to call it Head in the sand. Yeah. So that's that was the CFPB as far as I'm well, you know, I should just unpack that a little bit. So I'm I'm kind of like using anarchist almost like an insult. Yeah. And I don't I'm not actually saying it as an insult. No. I'm saying it as a fact that I think their the anarchy is their guiding principle. Well, especially because when they're you're... hoping for this creative destruction to create a space where they can take things. Especially when you look at like state. Right, State Department. Oh, what's yeah. happening there? That that what's happening with state actually unnerves me more yeah. than these other. It's about anything else, actually? Yeah, because it's really creepy. Like, if you've got no one with any qualifications to negotiate anything. over Korea, you know, over Iran, whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you literally can. It can get ugly very fast. It can get ugly very fast, and there's no stabilizing force. Force than that, no. So, so I don't mean to suggest that anarchy is all roses and flowers <clears throat> and sweet peas and butterflies. Um, no, it, it can be very destructive to engage anarchy if it comes from the top. Yeah. It's absolutely frightening. Yeah. Hey! hey look at that. All right. Next topic. Russian collusion. <laughs> wait, wait, are you gonna, sorry, are you gonna read? Are you gonna read your thing here? Or is this this is different than your thing? This is not my thing. Okay, so all right, I I have nothing nice to say about the Russian collusion, so maybe I shouldn't say too much. But um, you have thoughts? This is the big uh, dem conspiracy theory, and yeah. it's getting louder, and it's being thrown at every wall. Everything. It's being thrown at everything. Six allegations? It's, it's the Russians? It's getting weirder and weirder. And you laugh, but we're literally seeing people... Like It's like the Hillary supporters are in their basements connecting red lines between you know all these things on a, on a bulletin board. You know? It's a red panic. And in fact, you've seen that happen now mm-hmm. on Fox, where they're literally doing like a Glenn Beck-style... On you Fox know, or MSNBC? Uh, probably both now. I can't even tell. It's like New Republic and National Review. It's really I hard. I can't tell which one is which. <laughs> but go on, go ahead. Well, New Republic is is Do they have new editors liberal now? now. It became more liberal when Andrew Sullivan took over. Has it? Wait. That was New Republic. Okay. He's not there anymore, but... Okay, so is it more... It's okay. (laughs) I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Well, except that I I do read good stuff in New Republic once in a while now. Hey, I read good stuff in National Review once in a while. Yeah. So... um, Very long while. So, but... Okay, once a year. So it's it's gotten batshit crazy, I I swear. It's just like... (laughs) It's it's all this uranium deal, all this Russians, it's all this... And and now Hillary's into it because apparently she paid for the steel dossier. Oh my god! Um, but when you look, when you say, okay, well, what actually happened? You're yeah, like, happened. oh, they bought ten thousand dollars worth of Facebook ads. I think it was a hundred thousand dollars, Paul. <sighs> like a hundred thousand dollars worth of Facebook ads. You know how much money Hillary raised between like for the, this electoral cycle. A billion it dollars? was over a billion dollars with a B. With a B for ads. 
Right. Well, a lot of it went to ads. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure they paid staffers too, but not. But just you know. Yeah. So she just spent a billion dollars. Just to put that number in perspective, and if Russians, Russia could have bought ads on Facebook for point oh 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 whatever percent of <laughs> what Clinton spent and raised, <laughs> changed the election, and off and. Off. and that through the election, we deserved it. We Jesus deserved it. Christ. <laughs> totally deserved it. Or, or at least there's two ways to look at that. Either we had it coming if yeah. that $100,000 in ads swung the election. Yeah. Or we dodged a bullet because she's that incompetent. Yeah. It, or maybe both. Yeah, it's hard well, to say. And the other thing is, uh, you know, like their ad buys and whatnot, as far yeah. as I can tell, there was nothing illegal about that. No. I mean, you Correct, know, maybe yeah. they violated oh, some... Oh, I think it seems, certainly seems unethical. Sure. But I don't think it's actually... A, but a maybe some rule was violated, like the they needed to register as a foreign agent or something. Or they some fill, fill out some paperwork. In order so to, isn't, it, isn't that Facebook's fault for not having them fill out proper paperwork? <laughs> Facebook isn't on this too, Paul. <laughs> oh, my God. Facebook is colluding with the Russians. God, it's... it's total betrayal you got to follow caitlin johnstone on this she's she's on fire oh God, her, she's, her, she's she's the bomb I her um her, her yeah. facebook account was actually shut down for shut a down. few days not for related to russia gate but mm. because of uh something she an article she posted that was all about um oh was, was it the fbi thing it was all about the false flag operations, oh, historic yeah. false flag operations, all of which are very well documented. Very, they're all documented. We all know about them. It's, yeah. it's just, it's an open secret. And apparently they told her, this is, this you is violated your terms. Policies. Someone complained. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the thing, fake news. The thing is, there really is financial collusion, and Trump is all mobbed up with the Russian interests, and he has been for decades. decades These ages are and ages. ordinary, everyday financial crimes. And it's more like they used him as a way of laundering money. So New Republic, even without an investigation by Congress or a special prosecutor, there is much we already know about the president's debt to Russia. A review of the public record reveals a clear and disturbing pattern. Trump owes much of his business success and by extension his presidency to a flow of highly suspicious money from Russia. Over the past three decades, at least 13 people with known or alleged links to Russian mobsters or oligarchs have owned, lived in, and even run criminal activities out of Trump Tower and other Trump properties. Mm. Many used his apartments and casinos to launder untold millions in dirty money. Some ran a worldwide high-stakes gambling ring out of Trump Tower in a unit directly below one owned by Trump. Others provided Trump with lucrative branding deals that required no investment on his part. Taken together, the flow of money from Russia provided Trump with a crucial infusion of financing that helped rescue his empire from ruin, burnish his image, and launch his career in television and politics. So, yeah. So this is all really well documented. Yeah, that's not... He couldn't get any bank financing because he kept crashing his projects into the ground and not paying contractors. Yeah. He, everything he's done has been a, a money-losing operation yeah. up until he basically became a money-laundering operation. Uh, operation. There's also a New Yorker article from a few months ago uh, about a hotel project in Azerbaijan that I read. Mm-hmm. Um also, that's a huge money laundering operation linked to like the corrupt government of Azerbaijan and and the Revolutionary Guard in Iran. Uh-huh. So there's plenty of criminality. Yeah, and we we it's all like we know. Yeah, even just all the emoluments, just everything, right. all the deals he's and properties he's currently running as president. And look, yeah. that's essentially a criminal activity. It's criminal activity, and we know. Yeah, and as a nation, we don't care. Yeah. And just to be clear, the criminal activity of our political leaders is actually, we kind of don't care. We don't care. As a nation. Yeah. I mean, I care as an individual, and I have used to like get hot about this stuff and talk about it, but um, no one cares. No one cares. I talk about Saudi Arabia and the Dems and republicans too or you talk about yemen yemen yeah no one cares L- libyan slave trade you talk about and, israel yeah. and yeah <laughs> really it's really hard to get anyone no one cares even remotely exercised it's like the reaction you get on the right when you talk about mass shootings and guns. yeah it's, no one cares right okay, so, so i so i've decided i don't care about mass shootings anymore so it's not 
And so it's not that these things aren't wrong or aren't criminal mm-hmm. or that we don't know about them and this is big news. We know about them and as a nation we don't care. Right. But my whole my whole point is this is actual criminality and it's staring us right in the face. Yeah, we don't need to like do anything to make the case. Right. But what we're really investigating and people are counting on Mueller to take him <laughs> down for is is somehow some kind of collusion that through the election. And which there's is just which is a fantasy. My god, it's just a fantasy. It's not about some kind of uh, fraud orchestrated by the Kremlin to influence the election. The Which, fraud yeah. is is right here. It's right here. It's well documented. We have it. Yeah. And if we wanted to take action on that, we could. Yeah. We, we just don't want to. I mean, like, and really, even the foaming Russia Gate people. Yeah. Yeah. Have no interest in taking action on that. No. Because no one cares. It's yeah. It's also not clear who's got jurisdiction and whether he can be. Yeah. pardon himself while in office or what he's yeah. what kind of charges could be or applied or what, could be huh? but but, then, but mostly it's because uh no one with an r after their name will vote to impeach or or hold him accountable for any of this because that would impugn their standing, standing. in their party right well and which i gotta come back to this um when democrats have people who are you know doing things they shouldn't do they won't take action about it because you know, right? Because it's their party. It's their party, and it would they lose right. some power. Now this is this and is to, this is the other thing. I think the larger issue with Russia Gate is to get the Russia Gate folks foaming at the mouth every couple of weeks instead of doing anything else. Uh huh. And it works beautifully. They don't have to find anything. They just have to keep talking about it. It does work beautifully. It's it's, it's yeah. literally McCarthyism again. It's literally a red yeah, scare again. Just a red scare. Yeah. Whip them into a panic and who who and at some point they'll have to like throw people a bone so somebody right. will right. be acute but somebody will be prosecuted yeah. and now I, I should say know, I'm so, not saying there's absolutely nothing there. I am. Okay. I'm not saying there's absolutely nothing there. Uh, there was campaign there was campaign finance money that was involved with this right but what what isn't there is proof that somehow like votes were changed other than because people saw really poorly made ads you know yeah. that's what's not there yeah that yeah that, there's nothing there for that so um, and, well no and i don't mean to say that trump's never done anything wrong right and i don't mean to say that he's not a criminal because he is <laughs> i just mean to say there's no russia story to speak of there's no uh there's no um election collusion meddling story to no. speak of yeah but we're out of time we're out of time let's move on okay next next topic this is something is wrong on the internet no Absolutely. this never happens okay so what 10 minutes uh you better give this one 15 oh is that weird uh 10 okay 10 minutes okay go okay so um, this starts out, uh, the first quote I'm going to read is from a piece in the Washington Post that describes a piece on Medium. And that's like a little... That's meta. That's a little meta and maybe confusing, but I think it'll, it'll make sense. Uh, this is like a good summary of the problem. So the piece by tech writer James Bridle was published on the heels of a report from the New York Times that described disquieting problems with the popular YouTube Kids app. Parents have been handing their children an iPad to watch videos of Peppa Pig or Elsa from Frozen, only for the supposedly family-friendly platform to offer up some disturbing versions of the same. In clips camouflaged among more benign videos, Peppa drinks bleach instead of naming vegetables. Elsa might appear in a gore-covered zombie as a gore-covered zombie, or even in a sexually compromising position with Spider-Man. Uh. Um, so, my commentary now, parents think that an app like YouTube Kids actually is somehow curated. Like, there's someone whose job it is to make sure that the stuff oh. that appears on there comes from Disney, comes from, you or know, from wherever, Pixar, right. or even even an off off brand company mm-hmm, mm-hmm. someone who somewhere in the ecosystem is like accountable for their content right well, why would people think that? well 
Okay. That's the whole kind of the whole point here. That's okay. sort of the whole point is people shouldn't think that, and they yeah. should be actually concerned about Could this. More skeptical, yeah. uh, more skeptical than that. <clears throat> it's also to say that if YouTube is going to put their name on this stuff and make money off of it, and call it a kids and space. call it a kids application, kids, kids space, space, right. they damn well better have some kind vet of it and something. screen it and make it a walled garden, right? Because the alternative, as we will see is just psychotic deeply absurd yeah so um what actually happens is uh the up next feature is entirely algorithmic so when you watch a video uh it looks for another video that matches a certain a set of keywords certain pattern right yeah and so um n now we're looking at the medium article so bridal talks about the surprise egg craze uh, videos that are actually just consist of Unwrapping Kinder Eggs and other toy eggs, like plastic toy eggs you might, mm -hmm. in decades past, you might have gotten these from like a gumball machine. Right. I remember those. Um, those were fun. There are apparently it's thousands and thousands of these unwrapping videos oh, that consist of just eggs? a pair of hands opening up toy eggs and showing kids what's inside them. Oh, and kids oh, oh. are mesmerized. They'll watch them for hours. That's um, absurd. They That's have good. view counts in the hundreds of millions. Wow. So these are a little weird, but That's pretty weird. But they don't seem to be all that harmful, except that they're just ads. They're just ads, yeah. Yeah. But what's odd is they're not vetted ads. Like yeah. they're not... They just function as an ad. When you see like, okay, here's a pair of hands opening up an entire package of Cars movie branded... Uh, eggs, Kinder eggs, mm -hmm. and showing you all the little characters from the movie inside. Right. Um, it's not. This isn't put out by Pixar or endorsed or something. It's just sort of uh, coattailing or Co piggybacking on a popular property to get ad revenue. Oh. Which in itself, you ought, you ought to scratch your head wondering. Who pays whom for what? Who pays whom for what? And can't they <clears throat> shut that down with some kind of copyright ownership or violation? Yeah. But unboxing videos have but not have always been held to be not like fair use or something. Yeah, fair use. Um, but you know, this is what's so weird to me. Um, I've also heard about these videos that apparently are children playing, and kids will watch other kids playing. Yeah, yeah. What the hell? <laughs> I haven't, I haven't come across just strictly kids playing because the the well the the ones i we're going to get into clearly have some either sinister or just simply demented just adults demented. behind them right. um but let me keep going about this so the the toy videos are like yeah I, you know okay so all of that is actually harmful to your to your home life and to right. the kids development yeah but it's less harmful than you know so oh let's look at toys okay right. Because you think the worst outcome is they're gonna start harassing you to go buy them yeah. toys. toys right? Yeah. Um, what's strange? A lot of them have algorithmically generated titles, so you wind up with a video called "New Huge 101 Surprise Egg Opening Kinder Surprise Elmo." Hmm. That's the title. That's the title. And that one has 440 million views. There's a techno soundtrack, and it's just a pair of hands opening 101 egg toys, all mixed types, like in a laundry basket, mm -hmm. for 34 minutes. Huh. Okay. They're all they're almost all just over 30 minutes, because there's some magic that benefit. Like you can, that's the point where you maximize your ad revenue is if you exceed 30 minutes. <laughs> is that a worm? Is it a wormhole? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> It's like the Stargate closes at exactly 30 minutes. Right. Well, yeah. got all the ad revenue. Got to shut it off. <laughs> it's really not something that a parent would want to watch all the way through. Yeah. But then you like you get bored pretty fast watching this with this boring techno soundtrack and all these yeah. toys like, oh, look, Elmo's inside this egg. Yay. Elmo again. And then you Elmo's scroll down and you start looking at the comments and you realize that the comments are all gibberish. Yeah. Like random strings of characters and words, they seem to have no connection to the video. So these really small and You're children? like, what is going on here? What, yeah, what basement bin have we found on YouTube? Right. If you let these play, 
it, and it starts following doing the up next algorithmic thing, you get mm -hmm. more and more videos with names like Huge Egg Surprise Toys Challenge, Inflatable Water Slide Disney Car Toys, Paw Patrol Spider Man. <laughs> That's, the that's going to be the name of this podcast, by the way. Uh, where a kid, like, this one is a real kid exploring an inflatable play slide and retrieving egg toys from it. And it looks like like his mom bought and you know, rented this inflatable right. slide and right. then spent an afternoon shooting video of the kid rum, running through it and pulling out eggs and then opening all, all the eggs. Okay. And she just did this because, hey, you can, oh, she's got like a trillion views or something. Who knows? You okay. know, like you can apparently make money doing this. Wow. So, um, maybe I'm doing this mother thing. <laughs> you're doing it wrong. That video, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not joking. That video is listed as having almost 1 billion views. I got, no. That doesn't even make sense. It makes sense if you keep in mind that there are a billion cell phones in the world and a billion agitated parents giving their kids a Here, YouTube app to, to watch. Come on, just watch this. <coughs> okay. And maybe they start out playing a Disney video or something, but then the up next algorithm shuttles them off to the next keyword match. To the basement, apparently. Right. To a trap door in the basement my god okay so that that basically the title is designed to get the video ranked in searches and attached to the next up if you're watching any of these oh, I videos see. right oh two minutes two minutes oh we have to we're gonna have to extend this one a little okay, bit yeah, i'm okay. sorry there's more uh things get much weirder so there's the finger family songs and finger um family. there's this little like uh it's like the Where is Thumpkin melody, Where is Thumpkin, where they show off all the little fingers, and mm -hmm. it's like a counting video. Um, and so there's this song, but there are now, so Bridal claims that there are over 17 million Finger Family animated videos for kids to watch. I don't understand how that's possible. It's only possible if they are basically being churned out by bots that oh. just assemble. These, oh, these aren't the live action ones. These are these are animated. These are animated. So bots are. So bots are generating the title. They may even have the exact same video content. I don't know. Bots are turning out these titles, which are just permutations on like the top kids' video keywords, mm -hmm. and generating the video clips and uploading them. <clears throat> and there we are. And apparently bots are also watching them because you could set up a bot farm to watch the videos to to rack up okay, ad that revenue. That makes a little more sense than a billion kids watching trash. Well, I, I, I honestly don't know. Right. But then you can um and then you can boost the ranking of the videos by making a bot farm that also posts comments on the videos. So it's it's only it's like we're creepily close to just removing the the human element altogether and just like this idealized virtual child is being catered to by an army of bots producing watching ranking <laughs> and commenting on and then paying each an other. endless number of videos and ge generating revenue out of this somehow for what reason i can't contemplate but <sighs> because they so the bots watch the ads and because cop they're actually doing us a valuable service by watching That's, the ads for us yeah that can't be underestimated <laughs> Anyway, so um, this is Bertel, a bridal birdie. A huge number of these videos are essentially created by bot bots and viewed by bots and even commented on by bots. That is a whole strange world in and of itself, but it shouldn't obscure that there are also, this is what he believes, many actual children plugged into iPhones and tablets watching these over and over again, which in part accounts for the inflated view numbers, learning to type basic video search terms into the browser or simply mashing the sidebar mm -hmm. the up next to, to bring up another video or video um, now he points out some of them start to become disturbing right um he just he calls them he said these are decidedly off right something's not right yeah. uh he says they contain elements that might trouble anyone so he includes a video that uses the finger family music and a bunch of disney characters doing a head swap Mm -hmm. Now, there are, like, kids' books like this where mm -hmm. you have, like, head, body, and feet on oh, pages yeah. and you fold them over and you have to pick out the right combination. Right. right. Yeah. But this is these are animated, right? 
And so this one is called Wrong Heads Disney, Wrong Ears, Wrong Legs, Kids Learn Color, Finger Family 2017 Nursery Rhyme. Yay! If you watch this, and I did, I'm sorry to say, you see Disney characters getting their heads swapped, and when the wrong head goes on a body, Agnes from Despicable Me appears and bursts into tears, and you have this crying sound. And it's a little unnerving that really young kids would be watching this because kids are very sensitive to like the emotional content of right. and videos that the, like this. The character they're sympathetic with is upset. Right, right, right. So, so that one's weird, but it didn't seem that harmful. But then they get increasingly weird and disturbing. Um, they're like uh, Peppa Pig. They're a fake Peppa Pig, where Peppa Pig goes to the dentist and gets all his teeth pulled. And, oh, you know. Peppa Pig. Uh, and, but some of the ones that he was citing have been removed, so I could not actually watch them. That's um, probably for the best. Yeah, so they are. someone is responding to some of these complaints, it looks right. like. But um, then you get to ones like Buried Alive, Outdoor Playground, Finger Family, Song, Nursery Rhymes, Animation, Education, Learning Video. Did you ever see big, big. Did you ever see the movie Sallow, 120 Days of Sodom? No. <laughs> Buried Alive learning video, but carry on. So, this not to say that this was explicitly pornographic and violent and graphic like Sallow was, mm -hmm. which is basically kind of a torture snuff film, honestly, mm -hmm. um, in an artistic way, and it's all it's all commentary about the bourgeois. You know, it's like oh, it's a. Yeah. It's an art film, um, it's art. but uh, it is, it is. but this is like the kids' cartoon version of that, yeah. with stuff that's not explicitly pornographic. Like these cartoon characters get buried up to their necks, and then like people jump on their heads. And there's a scene in Sallow where they line up all the dissidents, and actually I can't remember if this is Sallow or another. Uh, Who's that Roman Empire that was so corrupt? Like other than the Roman Empire? Or? The Roman Emperor. Oh, Emperor. Um, Caligula. 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 Caligula, yeah. Yeah, uh, there, there's, a, I think, a clip from Caligula where a bunch of people are buried up to their necks and, and uh, Caligula has this giant machine that rolls along and, tilts and slices off their heads to the, to the cheers of the, of the yeah. you know, it's like a... It's like a resistance, but carry on. <laughs> it's it's like a, um, a coliseum fight, you know, yeah. except that everyone's helpless. So, mm -hmm. um, so this is like a cartoon version of that video to some extent. It's not nearly that violent or graphic, but it's just it's deeply, deeply weird. Deeply weird and evocative. That kind of yeah. Scene. It's yeah. made of stock copyright characters like the Scream guy, the Joker, Spider Man. They're rendered in 3D models over stock sound effects and music loops for 30 minutes. So um, these, are three, these are like <clears throat> really hook you in there for 30 minute videos. Bridal says I've written enough. Too much, but I feel like I actually need to justify all this raving about violence and abuse and automated systems with an example that sums it up. Maybe after everything I've said, you won't think it's so bad. I don't know what to think anymore. And this is where he kind of got me, and I'm like watching these, and then I'm like, they're so unsettling, but in a subtle way that it's true. After a while, you really don't know what to think what is think? going on. What's um, happening here? So... Uh, uh, like I was watching one of them that shows these cartoon characters riding motorcycles through a drive-through. Oh, oh no! I'm that almost done. Five, I'm almost done. Yeah, carry on. I'm almost right. done. There's a section that's supposed to teach colors. So the video says the name of the colors, and then you see a hamburger of that color. Then the character eats the burger and turns into that color. Right. So uh, that doesn't seem very pedagogically sound. Right? No. It is not, actually. It transitions to a different section where an animated Elsa travels through some kind of rendered environment, and then she falls off a cliff, mm -hmm. <clears throat> where she's falling for like a minute. She lands in a stream. She talks to Spider-Man, who's fishing, and then he walks around while this weird, random, upbeat music plays. He sees a strange world rendered with fidget spinners and ice cream cones, and then is dissolved by some kind of energy beam, and then he falls off the cliff. And it's just like, it's just like, it's just per going through these permutations of actions right. and characters. It's almost like a dream sequence. That's what I was saying. It's like, um, 
It violates physics. There's no clear pedagogical value. It's all over the map as far as copyright <laughs> violation. Uh, the closest analogy is like a fever dream or a bad drug trip, I think. Yeah. Um, also, the emotional content of the music and sound effects, are, which often have giggling and whatnot, they're yeah. like completely divorced from the action. The action. Which yeah. makes it seem like if you watch this a lot, eventually you will be schizoid, you know? Hurt. Like you will not be able to connect emotional cause and effect with events. Right. So... Oh. <clears throat> Wow, they get weirder too. There are some that are just live that are live action, like uh, Baby Police versus Frozen Elsa, Snow White, Pink Spider Girl, and more funny superhero video. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to know. They're going through the McDonald's drive-through, and then you and I were just watching one where this kid was pretending to run over his mom with a toy car. Yeah, and then it, the, later in that video, their cupboards are in, entirely stuffed with McDonald's Happy Meals. And then they involve giving each other shots. Um, like, like vaccinations? or Yeah, gunshot? like shots in the butt. Like they have a big plastic syringe that they're pretending to shoot each other up with. Oh. And you know, there, some of them involve Elsa, who's pregnant. They're often in bathing suits. They're just... I really honestly do not quite know what to think, except... Don't let your kids watch YouTube unattended. Jesus Christ, for the love of God. God. Don't do it. Don't do I it. I mean, I can't say for sure exactly what the point of all these is and who's behind them, but this is a weird thing that's happening, and it's yeah. real. It's, a, it's, it's real, and it's weird. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, don't watch Frozen Elsa chased by giant crazy bad chocolate with Spider-Man versus Jack Frost kids movie IRL. Just don't do it. No. Don't let them watch it. No. And maybe, I don't know, delete YouTube from your phone or something. Something. Oh, <sighs> that's so gross. Yeah. Is that the last one? That's the last one. Do you have anything else? Uh <sighs> We have some some uh, listener feedback. Why the hell do you have a Keurig machine? That's what I want to. Why does it even have a Keurig machine? <laughs> to own the libs. Oh no! I mean, you can you can think of it as, hey, if uh, Mother Jones uh, ever, ever ran an editorial about how wasteful these things are, how much trash they produce. Yeah. Let's go out and make sure we buy one, which is it's kind of like the rolling coal thing. Yeah. It's kind of like, hey, Mr. Uh, Prius driver, let me get in your face and with this huge waste of, of gas Everything. and create, create a bunch of soot. So there. So there. And I mean, that's... Uh, is that why people have these Keurig machines? No, people, people don't have them for that reason. They have them because if you're like my boss, you're setting up you know, a little break space at an office right. and... You want to provide coffee, but you don't want to have to deal with cleaning out a coffee maker every day and, mm -hmm. you know, and keeping fresh coffee on hand or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So you just buy a Keurig and then you just, when you go to, you know, Office Depot to buy toilet paper and legal pads, you Get also buy a giant case of Dunkin' Donuts, you know, pods. or whatever flavor Pod pods. And the coffee's not very good, but it has the intended effect, which is give you, you know, if you're a boss, you you want everyone to be drinking coffee. You want to wake your employees up. To keep them functioning. Why do so, people have these in their homes, though? That, What's that about? That I'm a little harder pressed to understand, except that I guess for a while they were... It was like a... I think it was like a lower budget version of these very high-end coffee makers oh. because you could buy like um you could buy a, an espresso machine that was automatic uh -huh. that uses pots and makes espresso oh. and actually makes pretty good coffee oh. um and those are quite expensive and most people can't afford these especially if you're paying off a half a million dollar mcmansion for example but you could buy a 120 dollar keurig machine which kind of looks gleaming and shiny and makes coffee that if you it's Say you've never coffee. tasted coffee before, you might mistake it for the <laughs> real thing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm being yeah. really cynical. I, I would not buy a Keurig. Um, there was this big scam over uh, Keurig 2.0 where oh, they right. were introducing pods that would only, only like the machine Keurig. would only work with the official 
pods. Like, wow. Wow. It's like that, is it? And and so that that's one issue. There's, I just don't want to deal with a company that tries to enforce that kind of bullshit. It's like the Juicero yeah. thing, right? I've never heard of it. I don't think I want to. Okay. Well, you're lucky. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's also that uh, it's also that the coffee's stale. Yeah. It's pre-ground. Yeah. You're buying it through a big box store. It's been in it's transit or in a warehouse forever. And the pods are not compostable or recyclable. It's just, I mean, it's just trash. It's a lot of trash. It's a lot of trash. Okay. And it's also, if you see these in stores now, when you walk into the coffee aisle at Kroger or whatnot, it used to be that it was all cans. Right. And if you'd go by like cubic foot of shelf space, right. that uh, wall of coffee cans was, I don't know, 50% coffee yeah. by volume or by something volume. Right, like right. that. And now it's a wall of Keurig pods pods in boxes and it's probably five percent coffee by volume oh yeah so i i'm sure that per serving it's relatively expensive i've never bought them yeah no but um yeah it's like pay a lot make a lot of trash for this convenience convenience i guess it's convenience it is convenient which you know we have one at work i understand people looking for convenience um, you know what I, I mostly yeah. use the thing for is um, you can uh, open up, you can pull out the pods mm-hmm. and close the thing up and just get hot water out of it. Oh, so so like I use it to cow. make tea. Oh, okay, that's cool. I guess like because it only takes a few seconds to cause, get hot water. Yeah, because it's like a uh, Mister Coffee. It has a water tank and a built-in heater, Got it. and it just heats. Heats the water in small quantities as it flows through. Yeah, that's fair enough. But it's, it's yeah. Just, yeah, all right. Well, I, and this is not to like, I'm not making a personal attack against anyone who owns one. It's just, no. it just seems so absurd to me. If you own a Keurig machine, uh, we'd be curious to hear your thoughts. It's We're not judging you for buying it. Like, like well, no, I'm, it's just, I actually want to know, why do you have it? It's just, we don't feel that we would buy this thing. Well, another thing that I see about them is like compared to a Mr. Coffee, which is just a switch and a heater and, you know, maybe a timer. Mm-hmm. Um, very simple. Uh, is <clears throat> these, these things are a lot of e-waste. They have touch screens, right? They have LCD touch screens. You've seen oh. the one in my office, haven't you? No, I, well, I, I've probably okay. seen it, but I like just edited it out. I didn't, I really didn't register. Didn't yeah. No, you uh, select just how you select the size of the container which determines how much water it feeds through the grounds yeah okay Okay. yeah so and if you get it wrong then you have coffee everywhere (laughs) Mm -hmm. anyway okay that's a curing thing but yeah it turned into a political football and like literally people were making videos throwing their curing machines off balconies to to protest to protest like uh, (laughs) to protest i guess hannity I guess Keurig pulled their ads, ads from, from Hannity, Hannity, who gave a favorable interview to Roy Moore. Yeah, and was defending Moore, although there's some debate about just how much of defense. Although he's turned that around, he's not defending Moore anymore because he's not that kind of person. <laughs> exactly. Whatever. <laughs> you mean, you Supposedly he shell? gave him like a 24-hour deadline to to give him to release more information release or more something. Information. Yeah, but I don't know if he's yeah, do so. wouldn't call it turned on him, but um, yeah. but no, but so people were smashing their cure. I don't know how many people really. It's like how many people actually set fire to their MAGA hats, you yeah, know? I don't know. Yeah. But um, no, so, but a few people did this, and like so, I'm just imagining, uh, you know, your wife comes home, and you're like, "Hey, honey, I smashed, smashed the, the coffee cube. maker." Like, and she's like, "Why did uh, you do that? Good. Why did you do that?" <laughs> Because you're gonna you're gonna regret this in about eight, eight hours. hours. I just deeply, go deeply. <laughs> we have to go through the drive-through now. Jesus. Don't go to Starbucks. Whatever you do. Yeah. Anyway. Places anyways. love to get coffee. So I don't know. That's the Keurig Long thing. Long suffering mega supporter. <laughs> poor guy. Poor guys. Poor guys. And women. Uh, actually, poor wives of. Tra- yeah. Um, is, is that how it's? I I, I don't know. I, I think couples line up though. I guess as as different as your yeah. views are, yeah, you know, 
They're in spitting distance. I guess. I, it's, I need to, to not idolize women because white women voted more, more than 50% for Trump. For Trump. Yes. And like, okay, well, whatever, whatever, you know, like, not some, not so much feminist per se, but whatever, like, idea I may have had that women were somehow inherently had tended towards moral superiority to men, like, that wiped that whole part out of your brain forever. Yeah. Women are just, women are human beings. Oh, no. They're human beings. Just... <laughs> Just as susceptible to the tribalism uh, that men are. I even heard that they poop. <laughs> oh, that's not true. Okay, thank God. <laughs> All right. Uh, we did get some listener feedback. Oh, we did? Yeah, on yeah. the YouTube video, Remember Your Friend. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, oh, she was suggesting that I use uh, tremor exercises for um, um, some of my nightmares and... Um, groggy well specifically for the nightmares right yeah um and i do actually do tremor exercises every day i just don't do them before bed okay because um well you're nursing a baby you're trying to get meds into the baby and meds into yourself and, for, for, yeah for and the kids are freaking out before they fall asleep. And freaking out and yeah, like not a, brushing like, their teeth not brushing their teeth they're not brushing my teeth okay yeah. fine yeah. teeth, if you insist yeah but no it's like this sort of fever pitch fever fever <laughs> yeah <laughs> Like, right, and then honestly, yeah. by the time they're actually settled, we're like it. our eyes are are dragging sure, okay. closed. So it hasn't happened right before bedtime, <clears throat> but um, one of the things I was thinking about though is, um, it really seems like a chemical reaction taking place with this medication, and it needs to be neutralized in some way. Mm. So I I wonder if I could induce a tremor that that would release, like some kind of dopamine or, or or oxytocin or chemical that would that would help that wipe would help. that out. I don't know. I don't know I'm either. Not sure. I got nothing. But um, I just hate to see you. Shot of whiskey seems to have a long way though. <laughs> I just hate to see you so miserable in the morning when I'm uh-huh. trying to get up and ready. And I'd really like to have breakfast with you before the kids are up and around and get out. That would be nice. But you're like, I'm barely, I'm, well, it's barely conscious. I'm not sure what the word is, but like I'm, yeah. I'm not ready to get out of bed. I'm no. not stable on my feet. I'm, yeah, you know, I'm really no, hundred percent. Yeah, even the, even if we get supposedly enough time. For oh yeah, it's sleep, not that I'm not well rested. I, I'm. You feel terrible. I just feel terrible. I just have a pounding headache. <coughs> I'm dizzy. I, I have poor like um, motor yeah. control and orientation in space. I just kind of have to like let that wear off yeah. before I'm really like safe behind the wheel or safe at a stove, etc. Right. No, I, I I just don't know what to do for you. Yeah. Um, I I'm glad your blood pressure is remaining controlled. That's about all I can say about it. But I wouldn't wish this on anyone. So. Yeah. So there it is. All right. The um. Yeah. Yeah. It's been better. But yeah. So uh, I think we're going to record two podcasts this week. Yeah, I think we are. And we uh, may do another one after dinner or t- tomorrow at some point, because I've got a long rant in me. I know. Bottled up. Bottled up, ready to go. Yeah. I need a blow. <laughs> a long, I need a blow, man. A long rant. And then can we stop talking about the Dems? Oh, God. I hate the Dems so much. <sighs> Let it out. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's kind of like... I. I What's to talk about? What's to talk about? I mean, I don't talk about the Republicans because I... Yeah. He left, like, he left them. You scraped them off your shoe long ago. Scraped off my shoe a long time ago. Yeah. So what else, you know... I, I'm just so fed up. I. Oh, is this you scraping the Dems off your shoe? Is that what this I is? I guess it is. I okay, guess it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. But it's been a long journey, you know, a long yeah. scraping. But may, maybe this is. I just... I guess I'm looking for... Um, we're not going to launch right into the, the, this thing no, now, not now, but but, no. but I guess I'm looking for some kind of justification that I feel like will hold up against everyone looking at me and saying, "Well, you know, one day you'll grow up." Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. But there isn't any. There, there isn't. Any. My my views are my views, and my moral choices and decision, my justifications for them are my own. Really? Well, no. You are the person yeah. who has to 
accept accountability for your soul. Yeah, and this is what you were. Has to do that. This is kind of what you were saying when people were jumping on me about the election. You were saying your phrase was, "Hey, keep your eyes on your, your own, own paper. paper. Yeah. Uh, everyone's got to take this exam themselves." Yeah. Right. So, so there it is. Okay. So uh, anything else you'd like to? I've done a lot of talking this time because I had uh, I had a backlog. A backlog. A week's worth. <laughs> Uh, no, I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, leave feedback on YouTube or on the blog or on Facebook or on Twitter or you on You could skywrite it like that blah, Navy blah. writer. Did you read about the Navy yeah. writer who sk- <laughs> skywrote yeah, a Yeah, skywrite a giant dick over our house <laughs> if you want to express your opinion of our podcast. <laughs> we take that, too. That'd be great. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Till next time.